this is some really terrible and, and some sad news. Uh, it's data that was actually just released recently by the CDC with demographic breakdown as well. And unfortunately, just really kind of continues a trend that we saw um, after COVID. So let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. We have the full chart here. Overall, the number of deaths uh, by suicide here in the United States actually increased 2.6% from 2021 to 2022. Uh, they have an overall demographic breakdown here. And some of the trends are some, some things that we've been trying to highlight on the show now for quite some time. As you can see, uh, the number of male suicides stood at some 39,255 in the year 2022 in the United States. Uh, female suicide also increased, actually even more so at a higher rate from 9,800 to 10,194. Um, when you look at the overall breakdown by race, you can see that you know Native uh, and African, uh, Na American Indian and Alaskan Natives, there was a slight decrease in the overall rate. The thing is though, is that the numbers there are, are different. They're just so low in some respect that uh, whenever you do see changes, that it will reflect differently in terms of the overall statistics. I think the important thing was to actually look at the age demographic and at some of the really troubling trends that we're beginning to see. So luckily, I guess, you know, the 10 to 20, 20, 10 to 24 year suicide rate went down by 8.4%. Um, there is still some analysis about happening with young girls, young men, social media and all that. That's a whole other discourse that we can uh, step away from. The problem that you're really seeing here is that from 45 to 64 years, there was a 6.6% increase in the suicide rate. But over 65, there was a 8.1% increase in the suicide rate, Crystal. That is particularly troubling um, and underscores a lot of issues around, look, we talk a lot about boomers here on the show, about boomer wealth, about you know how, in many respects, the luckiest generation that uh, set us all up for failure. But we also don't forget, and I was just looking at some retirement data just just yesterday, uh, over 50% of people have, don't have a single dollar in retirement saved. Wow. And a lot of old people are in a real bad situation. They are blown tire away from bankruptcy, and they literally only have a social security check to rely on. And in many respects, that is not enough in order to make rent, make food. Uh, there's a loneliness crisis as well uh, that has hit. There's also a big generational question around people who are elderly and whether you know their relatives should care for them or they're going to just dump them in a home. And oh, unfortunately, like so you know, if you look at the discourse and all that, I think a lot of that is reflected in that over 65 number. And one of the reasons why you should always care about the suicide rate, um, especially whenever it goes up, is you know Andrew Yang said this during his campaign. I still think it's one of the most profound things he ever said. The most basic reflection of a society doing well or not is are people living or are people dying? And we have a lot of deaths right now. We have massive deaths of despair. Suicide rate is just part of that. Uh, drug overdose and all that also went up in 2022 to basically an entire Vietnam War of people killed. One of the number one causes of death, uh, accidental cause of death now, is no longer car accidents for younger people. It's actually drug overdose, specifically by fentanyl. So these are all deeply interconnected um, about, around what we see, and it is a deepening sign of overall sickness. Increases in the suicide rate now um, over the last several years are something that we are really beginning to see is, a, is an overall trend. And if you do need help, um, you know, please seek it from a friend, call the suicide hotline or any of that because it's just, uh, it, it is a sign of deep sickness. Welcome, family, to another edition of Stranger Thinking Media. This is Yesha Yahoo, where we bring you the gospel of Yahusha Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ, to address the problems of a modern world. And today's topic, Self-Unaliving Strange Plagues, Part 18. The Casualty Rate. Revelation 18, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth the merchandise anymore.
So this is a a very sad statistic, um, and it's 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 been around for a while, but it's just increasing at a fairly rapid rate. And we can uh, you know blame all sorts of things for it. Um, you know, we just came out of the pandemic, and that increased the rates. But the rates were increasing even before that. You know, um, we stand in a, a perpetual state of war. You know. You could ask yourself the question, um, how many years uh, in the history of the United States, how many years has the United States been at war? Well, that's a, a hard calculation. But here's the easy calculation. How many years has the United States since its inception, how many years has it not been at war? I think it, the figure is like 22 years total. So let's understand when you're at war and you're going to foreign countries and you get there and you start unaliving people, you know, human beings have consciences. And so a lot of people come back just based on that alone with PTSD, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and t- just the fact that uh, you might be unalived all of a sudden, you, you know, you're on, your head's on a swivel. You, you, you know, you can't, you can't really rest. You, you're always looking around. I mean, it's stress, constant stress. So you come back stateside and, you know, you're stressed out and now you have a, a serious condition, right? That's a real thing. It's actually a spiritual thing. But, you know, modern day doctors with their technology will give it a medical term. But it's a spiritual thing, you know. So this perpetual constant warfare, uh, the, the system itself is broke. I mean, you have pe- baby boomers who really, when they retired years ago, their social security check might have been enough. But then there's inflation. And then we got hit with the huge inflation. And what that did, that, that check that they were getting every month, especially if they didn't have a uh, retirement plan or at least a 401k. Uh, they, were li- they could have, back in the day, lived off of that check, and they were happy with that. But then as inflation kicked in, as the value of do- the dollar just disintegrated, that, uh, you know, maybe it was $2,000 a month. But back in 1980, you could live pretty well off 2000 a month, you know, Maybe in 1990, you could live well off 2000 a month. But in the new millennium, you're broke. And as time goes on, the value of the dollar gets less and less and less and less, right? So they're just getting broker and broker and broker. So it starts to become a curse. Longevity starts to become a curse. Because the longer you live after retirement, guess what? The broker you actually become because of the time value of money is getting less and less. And inflation, most people don't look at it this way, but what inflation actually is, and and it goes all the way back to the start of the Revolutionary War, um, inflation is actually a tax. It really is, and and they can control it. So if they don't want to tax the people, you know, you might not get elected if if you keep taxing the people too much. Well, then you just start printing money, and then all of a sudden what happens? Inflation kicks in. And the people are getting taxed without really realizing they're being taxed. It's all a game. And and I go back to the Revolutionary War. When they taxed tea, it was only a three percent, by the way. And they went to, and they had an all-out rebellion over a three percent tax. Well, we're getting taxed at a rate of about thirty-three percent now. (laughs) So I just find that really, you know, interesting. So, anyway, I say all this to say that people are more and more in the midst of despair. Um, the big thing is, is, is where are you going to live? Uh, rents are going up. Houses, the, the price of houses are going up. How, people, can't, people with good jobs can't even afford to buy a house nowadays. And interest rates jumped, but the prices of houses really haven't gone down. So that means you could be facing some ungodly monthly payment, you know, like 3000 a month for some... 1,500 square foot house or something, you know. And it's not getting better. 
um, people people think that okay, eventually you know interest rates rise, the, the the price of houses have to go down. You know that's the that's the normal. That would be normal. It just makes sense, right? No, and I saw it after two thousand eight, is that corporations started getting into the mix, and I can go all into that, but uh, you know. That wasn't the original intent. Corporations are not supposed to be buying single family houses, but yet they are. And that was a big question during the Bush administration. Um, you know, whether financial institutions could uh, actually invest in, you know, properties. But uh, I'm not going to get all into that. But what you see kind of happening is corporations buying up these properties, and corporations generally. I'm not going to say they have endless money, but they got more money than me and you. So if they want that house and you want that house, guess who's going to get the house? They are. And they'll bid it up until you, you know, if you do get the house, it's because they bid it up the price to a point where their, their Wall Street buddy is going to get paid, you know, more for it too, you know. But uh, bottom line is things have gotten so bad, so depressing. Um, again, I, I, I want to quote, uh, there's a quote that's attributed to Thomas Jefferson. He said something on the order of, if the American people ever allow a central bank on its shores, first by inflation and then by deflation, the corporations that will grow up around it will deprive the American people of their properties. And that's exactly what's happening. And so if, you, if you're a student of history, you'll know that the banking system was something, if you, uh, Benjamin Franklin actually said it. He said, we fought this revolutionary war primarily to break free of the banking system of Europe. I mean, they don't teach you that in school. He said the primary reason for the revolution was to break free of the banking system of Europe. And they fought long and hard up to you know, Andrew Jackson. Uh, his life was miserable, but he, he was like a, a pit bull. When he bit into that, he said, I am going to destroy these banks, these centralized banks in America, because he, he saw what was happening. He said, they got to go. And of course, they had the money, so they turned around and made his life miserable, right? Uh, even... Uh, you know, they don't come out and say it, but he, it, there was an assassination attempt on his life because they said, you know, we got to get rid of this man because he he's the one that's got us, may have to sign the charter for renewal because the central bank at that time had a 25-year charter, which was probably a good idea, you know, <laughs> but it had to come up for renewal and Andrew Jackson had to get reelected and he did. And the first thing he did when that thing came across his desk he vetoed it. He would not sign it, and the charter for the bank, the central bank, ran out, right? And so basically, they got kicked out of the country. But then, you know, there was an attempt made on his life. Um, they, if you think they are going after Trump, oh my God, they went after Andrew Jackson like you, they went after him so hard. His wife, I believe, uh, couldn't handle it. She had a mental breakdown. That's what I, I think happened. Some of you may be students of history, but they went after her bad. And she cracked under the pressure, and he was very bitter. And he, he kind of blamed these guys for what happened, and he made it his life's work to destroy them, and he did, uh, up, at least up until, you know, um, after the Civil War, they made a comeback. And they did it methodically until by 1913, not only did they come back with a vengeance, you know, Wilson signed off on it, but there was no, no charter limit. There wasn't no 25-year charter. It was for life, you know. But anyway, I, I digress. I went all off on a tangent just to say this. Life has gotten, gotten extremely hard, gotten a lot tougher. The millennials, you know, you got to be making a hundred thousand dollars a year just to be able to afford somewhere to live nowadays. And I'm not, that's not really a stretch, you know, for one bedroom, you know, uh, apartment, just an apartment, you're paying $2,000 a month. 
for just your average garden variety apartment. And I had rental properties. I remember renting out, you know, nice size of apartments or, or duplexes. I would rent them out. I'd be lucky to get like $400, $400 a month. And I thought I was overcharging them. It was back in the uh, early, early millennium, right? But things have gotten a lot tougher, so you see, you see what's going on. And it's the age range. It's the baby boomers who are unaliving themselves to, at the highest rate. And young people, too. But the increase amongst baby boomers, that's kind of a new thing. All of a sudden, their life got intolerable. You know, because of what's going on. So we can see what's happening, you know. Um, so I'm going to read from Exodus chapter 9, uh, verse 16. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, or to show in thee my power, and that my name, my name, may be declared throughout all the earth. That's Yahweh saying, I want my name to be known throughout the entire earth. I want my name to be on the lips of every human being on the planet. So he said he raised Pharaoh up for this purpose, so that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. So for all those people who are saying, oh, the name of God is too holy to say, you know, <laughs> We must call him Adonai or Hashem, which means the name. Here it is in black and white, or in this case, yellow and blue. He raised Pharaoh up just to knock him down because Pharaoh was the greatest of the greats at that time. Egypt was on top of the world at that time. And Yah said, I'm going to use this slave people. <laughs> I'm going to deliver. They don't even need to fight back. They don't need an army. They don't need guns. No, no guns back then, but you get what I'm talking about. I'm going to bring Pharaoh to his knees by my power. And it's, it's an awesome thing to fall into the hands of, uh, a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim, Yahweh. So we, at the height of Pharaoh's pride, there was no conceivable way that the children of Israel could escape his power. None. And that's when Yah is most mighty. What did Samson do? He picked up the jawbone of an ass and destroyed the, the heavily armored Philistines. I mean, they had bronze shields and bronze swords and bronze helmets. Helmets. Uh, the Israelites didn't know how to make that stuff. They were still using clubs and rocks, slings. The Philistines were a dangerous enemy because they had learned those secrets and were starting to dominate the Israelites. Samson, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, he took up a jawbone of a donkey, a bleached jawbone sitting in the desert, picked it up and beat the crap out of them with the jawbone of an ass. Why? Because Yah chooses the weak and the base things to confound the mighty things. He used the jawbone of an ass up against polished bronze and defeated it. So here he's saying to Pharaoh, yeah, you got, you got my people down. <laughs> you got them enslaved. You got them broke down. But watch this. I have raised you up just to show my power and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. As yet exaltest thou thyself against my people that thou will not let them go. Just hating on them. Hating on them. Let them go. Let them go. Let them serve their Elohim. Let them serve Yahuwah in the wilderness. But no. No, 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 no. Pharaoh will not let them go. Even to this day. In fact, I think they're calling, uh, well, I won't, get, I won't get off onto that subject. But yeah, Pharaoh, let them go. Because if you don't let them go, stuff's going to start happening to you. And I'm saying all this and I'm not, trust me, I'm not uh, trying to make people who, have, uh, who are going through a tough time, I'm not trying to make them feel marginalized, like their problems don't matter. But what I am saying is, if you look at us 
Look at America as a people, as a nation. Things ain't right. We're, you know, you can blame God all you want for the things that are happening now, but this, we got to get right with the most high, you know, because nationally things are going to start coming upon this country. And if you're waiting for politicians, no, 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 don't wait on them. You know, I remember George Carlin saying, hey, they're bought and paid for. I mean, you know, don't wait on them. These people you vote for, you know, don't, do not wait on them. It's not about money. It's, it starts with the spirit. You know, in this country, you could live next door to somebody for 10 years and not even know their name. I know this, when I grew up, and I grew up uh, in the big city, and, and that big city has a harsh reputation. And yet, I knew the names of everybody. I'm not making this up. I knew the names of everybody on my street, in, on that, at least on that frontal block, and even down the street on the next block, most of those people. I, literally, there have been times I would just uh, go across the street and just start shooting the breeze with the, the neighbor and go in their house and watch TV. I mean, it, it was a family thing. I don't see that anymore. I'm not saying it, it doesn't exist, but it doesn't exist on the level that it used to exist. And I remember being in the first grade, walking a quarter of a mile to school, and that was the norm. We all did. There was no fear of being kidnapped or something happening to you. And, you know, it wasn't even a thought. I remember the first time I ever heard something like that. By then, I was an older teenager, but I was like, really? They, they're snatching kids? I mean, it was like an oddball thing, and it happened. It was so, such a big deal because it, nobody had ever heard of that. Like, now you have to watch your kids. And then I remember on Halloween, all of a sudden, they started saying, oh, be careful, you better watch your food. People putting razor blades in, in the candy or in the apples or whatever it is. It, stuff just started going downhill. It was almost as if people started hating each other. Some spirit had been unleashed. This country is not what it was. You know? And of course, this country has always had issues, but you know, I can look in different communities, like I can look at my community, and we had each other's backs. It was a different thing. Now, Totally different. Anyway, um, you know, I'm, I, I just keep. To, I can talk till midnight. You know, I try to I try to keep these uh, the time limit on these these discussions. But, anyways, um, it is what it is. And uh, the pressure of perfection. Well, that's you know, interesting. Um, yeah, there's a lot of that. I was looking at statistics in Japan and wow, you know, J Japan is not known for being, uh, particularly a, you know, for lack of a better term, particularly a Christian country and their cultural norms are kind of that perfection. And if you, you know, not everybody's going to be rich and successful. I mean, but in their culture, if it's kind of like if you don't become successful and the pressure to, be, to stay successful because of what everybody will think of you, and there's no outlet, not like there's a church on every corner and the church will accept you as, you know, come as you are, accept you. Grace, grace, right? And grace is a beautiful thing, don't get me wrong. But their culture is to the other extreme. And, uh, you know, for instance, I've heard that if you, and this has happened, if you marry a Japanese woman, then one thing she will never do, or for the most part won't do, is you can't convert her. She's, it's built into them. It's, it's their culture. They will not become Christians. I'm not saying they are not Japanese Christians, but what I'm saying is they're a tough nut to crack. Their culture is very strong. You know, um, in Korea, however, is different. There's, there's lots of Christians, and a lot of people already converted to it, right? 
So they already have a background in the Hebrew scriptures, right? But uh, in Japan, the suicide rate is off the chain because they have no outlet and this life is all there is to them. And if, if Paul, I think Paul said, if this is the only life there is, then of all men, we are most miserable. Because I think he was in jail when he was writing that. So he could withstand imprisonment because there was a higher calling. There was a greater, uh, he had his eyes set on something greater. And that's the human condition. When you lose sight of something greater and you think this life is all there is, man, I, I don't even understand how people could actually think this is it. How do they think all this got here? Well, they don't believe in an infinite God, but yet they believe in an infinite universe. Well, how did this infinite universe get here? It makes no sense. Nothing created is without a creator. And if you can believe in an infinite universe, then you can believe in an infinite creator. I mean, they just go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. There's nothing created without a creator. Your DNA, it's a biological program. Now, for you programmers out there, I bet you've never seen a program write itself. Or even now with AI, you might say a program can write itself, but yet a program that could write itself was created. You, you follow what I'm saying? Human beings can change their circumstances to a degree. So they're the ultimate AI. Well, not AI, they're not artificial. Well, you could say it's artificial, but my point is, in the beginning, there's always a programmer. There's always a creator in the beginning, whenever that beginning is. So anyway, Exodus chapter 9, verse 8. And Yahuwah said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. And it shall be, and it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt, and shall be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. And Moses sprinkled it up towards heaven, and it became a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because the boil. For the boil was upon the magicians and upon the, all the Egyptians, and Yahuwah hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And he hardened not unto them, and he hearkened not unto them as Yahuwah had spoken unto Moses. So what you see there is this is a physical representation. Um, in these last days, when the Most High moves to break a nation, when he moves to break a nation, he can break it easily. And I think we saw with this last pandemic how easily a nation can be brought to his knees. This pandemic wrecked the economy. Businesses, small businesses, just basically died by the, by the thousands. I'm, I'm trying to tell you something. The Most High, we take for granted his power. You know, people are so afraid of demons and the devil and all that. Man, you know, the one you should be afraid of is Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh Elohim. You know, Yahweh, my God. Okay? So, anyways, just something to think about, but this is a very sad situation. And again, this is me bringing forth light as to why things can be going south for us. We need to get back to the scriptures. We need to get back to the commandments. And, you know, people need to stop saying the commandments are done away with. No, the commandments are immutable laws. Just like the, the, you know, the laws of thermodynamics or something like that. You know, it always holds. You, you can't be hating on your brother and think good things are going to come about. You know what? You can't, and you can't hate on the Most High and think something good is going to come about. And the Most High gave us specific standards. That's what Torah means. It means instructions. We, that is the operating manual for us us biological robots, if you will, uh, or us uh, 
biological cyborgs, whatever you want to call us, but it is an operating manual, and the Most High, the Creator, gave it to us. And a lot of us are operating without that manual. And then, when it breaks down, that's, you know, that section, section that's in every operating manual, every O&M, you know, where it says troubleshooting. Well, because we don't pay attention to the manual, we can't troubleshoot the problem. And the problem is, is unsolvable without that operating manual, those instructions called Torah, right? You have to know how to solve the problems. And, and the answers are all there. So just something to think about. So, you know, I'm not going to belabor everything, but, uh, you know, when Adam and Eve got kicked out the garden, it, you know, Yah gave them instructions. Whatever you do, don't eat from this tree. What, what did we do? We ate from the tree. Adam, uh, Eve ate from it first. Handed it to Adam. Remember, Eve ate from that, that tree first, so Eve had knowledge first. So she sinned first. So she, it was easy. It was child's play at that point to overcome the man because she had knowledge and he didn't. And she said, come over here, dummy. Eat this fruit. And the only defense he had, because she was now smarter than him, I mean, literally, she had knowledge he didn't still. The only defense he had against this knowledge was the word of the Most High, who told him, do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And so if somebody smarter than you has all the advantages. They have the advantage when you don't heed the word of the Most High. So in other words, you don't have to be a genius. If you adhere to the words of the Most High, then no matter how smart the other person is, you always win because you are, you're adhering to the Most High, right? And so when you, when you do these spiritual uh, battles, when you're in spiritual warfare, these angelic forces, uh, you know, spiritual forces, I'll say, have the advantage over you because they're older than you, wiser than you, smarter than you, yet you can still defeat them, and you can defeat them how? Just stick to the Torah. Stick to the instructions. As long as you don't, as long as you, don't you know, wander off the path, that's all they could do is, you know, hold those shiny objects in front of you and get you to wander off the path. And we're all going through that. Every one of them. Those shiny objects. Things that your, your flesh wants. Whether it's more money, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, whatever. A, a Lamborghini, a big fancy house, whatever it is that you desire in your flesh, right? I'll leave it at that but it's always being dangled in front of you, and even more so today. You know, I think about it when Paul lived, how, you know, he could call people of that day wicked. Well, the people of that day were basically subsistence farmers. Uh, they get up at sunrise, farm all day, and, you know, when the sun goes down, they're inside, they're eating and going to bed. And yet, there are people among them that, yeah, that the apostle could say was evil. Now think about today. What would he call the people today? The best of us. The best of us would be like the most wicked person that ever lived back in those days, if that makes sense. I mean, we're bombarded with images on our cell phones that are most unwholesome. You know, uh, not just images, but moving images. Not just moving images. Uh, just, I'm just saying, we're facing temptations that they didn't have to face back then. So if you can overcome today, how big is your crown going to be? I don't think people think of it that way. You're, you have, the Satans have so much power now in this world that they can broadcast their signals into your home 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They couldn't do that in Paul's day. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I just find all that very interesting. So, 
for the last 16 years, the suicide rate increased from, and this is a little bit, this data is a little old, but it's continually going up, right? From 2001 to 2017, a rise of 31%, a third. Mm. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. I mean, people are becoming, just look on the news, and not, not necessarily the network news, because they're going to show you whatever it is they want to show you, but it, you can't miss it. The people are just becoming very hateful. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, come out of her, I'm telling you, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plague, whether it be in the body or in the mind. Come back to the light. Come back to the Most High. Come back to Torah. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her. Double according to her works. Well, family, that's all I have for today, or at least for this video. I love you all so much, and thank you so much for continually supporting my content. If you did enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell, and share this with your friends and family. I'm sure they'd find it interesting as well. I'm very excited to continue this journey with you. I thank you all for bringing certain stories to my attention, and for continually keeping me updated with certain events around the world. I very much appreciate you all, and shout out to the channel members. And may everybody have a beautiful and blessed day. It was in the body of Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I'll see you on the next video. Shalom.